Hey guys, this is Jaybird from UJX Mods. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to port AI animations specifically for zombies. I bound a Black Ops 1 rig to a Black Ops 3 rig and basically did the same sort of setup that was done for view model animations in the previous tutorial. And basically it'll allow you to drag on a T-Anim and then have it go from the Black Ops 1 joints and then move over to the Black Ops 3 joints by uh, parenting. Basically, I've done all the hard work and bound all the joints and made it so that if I move the Black Ops 1 joints, it'll move the correct Black Ops 3 joints. And since the joints are different, it allows for basically a conversion in a sense so that that way the animations actually work properly. Uh, a good example of like what would happen if you didn't do this would be, say, uh, the the hands of uh, an animation or even the feet a lot of times will be in a ball or bunched up and not look properly because the, the hand joints and the feet joints have been named differently. They have new joints now. It's supposed to be, I guess, more in, like, more in depth so that they have more freedom to what they can do in an animation. Anyways. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial on how to actually convert that over using this rig and I've provided this rig in the download section and I'm also going to be using one of the scripts that I believe it was Azuri. Um, yeah, Azuri, I'm crediting him for his uh, Mel script, the same one that we used in the view model animation. I didn't want to bother creating one since he already had one provided and I figured this would work pretty well with it using the same setup. And it's going to be basically the exact same thing. If you want to follow the tutorial in the, the readme, go right ahead. But this is going to be a more of a visual showing you how this works. So you open up the file and this is what you're going to get. And then all you got to do is get one of your T anims here. Let's say I'm going to do, uh, let's see, zombie sprint fast. That sounds fun. It sounds like a transit sprinter or something like that. And what do we have? So now, if you were to have dragged this onto a normal Black Ops 3 rig, the feet and the hands probably would have been all messed up. So this fixes that. So if you look at the anim, you can see it actually looks pretty damn good. I don't have the head on there. Not really necessary. It's not like uh, it's moving any parts in that. So it's not too big of a deal. Um, so I think we're pretty much good here. We got a good anim going. Another thing that you're probably going to want to take into consideration is that with AI animations, they use delta in the APE or asset uh, asset manager back in World at War, and that basically set the anim down to from basically working from a zero zero standpoint of having the origin up here so it would have had it so the feet were on the ground but now because it was set to delta and it's been exported using probably tom's tools or wraith or whatever um, now the animation has been set down to its waist so the best thing to do to fix this issue would be to bring up if you go under windows and you go to animation the graph editor. So this is basically one of the main tools that I like to use when I'm doing animations. Um, so what I like to do is find... So usually if the if the animation doesn't have any keyframes on tag origin or J root or main root, uh, you can usually just set, an anim, uh, set a keyframe on there by selecting a frame and clicking S. Um, the issue is you can see on both of these tags we got red lines here meaning we got keyframes on every on both of these so we have to use the graph editor so we're going to do the translation of Z so let's go with tag origin and a good point of reference would be to do uh, let's see be nice if we can get a camera that's actually on the side here that's the side, but it's upside down. <laughs> well, we might have to go with that. So, you know what? This will be good. I'll just do it from here. So we just want to line up the feet with the origin there. So we're going to click on the translation Z, and we're going to select all the joints here. Or not joints, but keyframes. 
and we're going to try to move these up. So select all of them by um, left clicking and using a box select. So just do that. Press W so that it will start going into move mode. And then you're going to want to go to one of the first frames here and middle mouse drag. And it should allow you to drag vertically like this. You want to make sure you have a horizontal uh, a horizontal grid selected on here so make sure this is checked so that way it doesn't move off the timeline because you want a keyframe to be on frame 0, frame 1, frame 2. You don't want it in between frames that doesn't make any sense. Um, you could put this grid on but it, the vertical grid but it might mess up your animation because it's going to snap everything to the grid so I suggest keeping the vertical off and you can just move this. So I'm going to keep this off to the side here. Let's kind of zoom out a bit. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to try to line up the feet the best we can with this zero zero line going vertical here. So I'll just drag this up. I could probably zoom out quite a bit here. And then if we just keep going, it doesn't need to be perfect because a lot of times when they an made these animations, a lot of the like steps and whatnot are actually going to go into the ground. But that actually looks pretty good. Like maybe if I move it up a little bit more. You don't want, you want to make sure that it doesn't accidentally be above the ground because if it's in the ground slightly, then it's okay. You'll notice that the, uh, you, it's harder to notice if like say a hair bit of the foot is in the ground, it's easier to notice like them floating above the ground. So it's probably better to just kind of have it slightly past like that. So let's see how that looks now. Let's go into perspective mode. And yeah, so that looks like it's right on the ground. So now when he's running, he's actually on the ground there. Another issue that you might consider trying to fix with AI items is this is supposed to be a fast item. When you're looking at this, does this look like he's running quick? No, it almost looks like he's sliding slightly backwards. So it's kind of weird. So we can also use the graph editor to edit that as well. So the mo the movement that he's going in is the x direction here. So if we bring back the, the graph here and we go on x, what we can do is, ooh, hmm. A lot of times you have all these extra keyframes in here and he seems to be moving at a pretty constant rate. So what I'm going to do here is kind of cheat a bit. I'm going to select all the keyframes that are in between the start and end point and I'm going to delete those. And then what happened here is we got rid of the, the keyframes for the horizontal direction, but then it kind of waved out our path. So we kind of want to keep that constant because that's what it was doing before. So select those two and we're going to kind of press uh, this one here. Basically you can play around with the ways that like it does it, but this was pro this is going to keep it completely straight and he's going to go at a constant speed going from point A to point B. So now this is basically our displacement. So this is where he was at the origin. Now he's going to be about 320, 330 units away. So if we want it to move quicker, we want to put the distance further. So um, we're going to want to keep the grid on just like last time. And we're going to try our best to move this vertically only. So we'll just keep going here and we'll just kind of see how that looks in a sec. Let's see how quick he's moving now. A little bit quicker. He can still move a lot, actually. I'd, I'd actually want that a lot quicker. So we'll just keep going. And this was actually a technique that I did back in World at War for a lot of AI anims, like for the Frostbite zombie, which was the Napalm zombie as like a frozen zombie. And then let's try that. He's moving quicker now. I still think he should move even quicker. So let's just keep going here. forgot where I lost track of where I had it I think it's in the yeah okay so it's like the second one over there all right 
I think that's probably good. Yeah, look at that. Now he looks like he's actually running. And you can play around with the settings and try to see how you want to get it to work properly and whatnot. But that will have your animation set up properly so that not only is he uh, going to work and look proper in World at War, or Black Ops 3, sorry, he's also going to now be on the ground and not halfway in the ground as well as moving at a proper speed because a lot of the animations are surprisingly slowed down. Um, you can also, instead of going through this, uh, you could set the rate in script, but this is a good way to, if you don't want to deal with scripting side of things and you just want to apply the animation at like a normal constant speed, this would be how you set it up so that the animation is playing at the speed that you want. Okay. So now, now that we have our animation completely set up, we want to export it just like we did with our view model uh, for our guns. So this is going to be the same way we did it before. So now we don't want to play around with the Black Ops 1 joints here. We're going to want to deal with the Black Ops 3 joints. So we've got our animation on. And I've already done the part where you would have dragged on the script that would have named everything to have underscore T7 at the bottom. The only reason why I did that and we didn't have to do it this time was because we're not dragging a weapon on. Uh, the other one allowed you to drag the weapon on and deal with that. So in this case, it adds the T7 suffix at the end here. And so we're going to do the same thing. We're, you want to select T7, BO3 joints T7, and then go select hierarchy. And then we're going to drag on Azuri script remove namespace. So remember, if it gives us the error, just drag it on again. Like, see, it does the error. So for some reason it does that. If you drag it on the second time, boom, there we go. T7 stuff's all gone now. Now, the only thing you gotta do is select T7 again, tag origin, select hierarchy, and just like usual, export, and you do however many frames you're doing. So this is from zero to 56 and you choose your export destination and voila you have an ai animation converted from black ops 1 world of war black ops 2 whatever call of duty to black ops 3. all right thanks for watching guys stay tuned for more tutorials and remember to subscribe see ya